Good evening and welcome to the uh, Thursday, September 12th meeting of the uh, New Market Conservation Commission meeting. And uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So would you do the roll call, please? Present. Here. Here. Present. Okay. We have no members of the public, and we don't have any permits in front of us tonight. Just to, um, the only thing that I have permit-wise is just um, from um, DES, the permit that was granted to the town for um, the work on the Tucker Well. That around in case anyone has any questions about that. Um, we'll go on to the approval of minutes from the meeting on August 8th. <coughs> Did everyone get a chance to look at the minutes? Any questions or edits? Then I will make a motion to approve the minutes from August 8th. I'll second. All in favor? Do it again. <laughs> yes. Yes. I do not have a uh, report, a financial report. Again, we got that one last month, so that was good. We did actually had one there, but uh, no, no new report this month. Um, I I'm trying to think if we had any expenditures. Um, can't think of anything that would have gone out. Um, all right, so committee and subcommittee reports. Um, Casey's not here. Um, he, let's see, I'm trying to think if there was, the, the things that he mentioned to me are pretty much all things I'll, I'll cover in my chairman's report, so I don't think there was anything else um, from town council. But planning board. So I know there were some questions about the development on Hershey Lane. I don't have much information. Um, they were supposed to attend the session on Tuesday, but that was continued to the next meeting, which is October 8th. Okay. Um, there was a site walk. Uh, we didn't discuss that. I wasn't able to attend that. I know they're going to be single family homes. There was talk about them being town homes initially. Mm -hmm. um, so probably we have more information next meeting. Is it, is, is it, I'm assuming it's a 12 house single home development where they're looking to have open space to grant them that exception? Right. Yep. Yep. There's some concerns as well. Um, there were concerns from the public. There's some nature trails in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so there were some concerns about um, denying access to those. Um, but that's all the information that I have at this point. So when they say nature trails, are they, are they referring to the, there are some sort of informal paths, I would yeah. describe them, along the Piscassic River in that area? Is that, right. do you think, what they're referring to? Yeah, because there's nothing formal, there's nothing that's like, Right. Created by the town or anything. I think it's there's trails that members of the high school use for like training and for things running. like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it's nothing official that I'm right. aware of. Right. I think I think there's conservation easements on quite a, some of the private property back there, but it's not it's not it's official. It's not open to the public in terms of it's not you know it's uh, just private property that they for conservation easements. I don't know if it's posted or not. You know, that's up to the landowner. Um, okay. 
not posted. All right. So there are some plans if you guys from do set survey if you want to look at those at all to see. Um, it doesn't obviously it's just preliminary stuff because they really don't have where the houses exactly would be on the plan yet. It just gives you a layout of the property. But obviously there's quite a bit of it that's wet area that I'm assuming is going to be the set aside area for the open space. It's not going to be that dry at the end area. All right. So um, I'll start. I've got quite a long list here of stuff to cover for Chairman's report. First thing we, we need to start thinking about are monitoring reports. We're moving into monitoring <laughs> season. We tend to do 90% of our monitoring between now and say January <clears throat> and it's just because it's a good time so um, if there's a property that you know right now today that you want to do we could we could cover that if not just start thinking about it because um, we probably want to get some ideas firmed up by October by our October meeting um, so just want to mention that. Um, Shopmeyer Park got a flagpole completed by uh, Boy Scout um, Talon Sargent, completed the project last weekend. Um, it's a beautiful flagpole if you want to go over and see it at Shopmeyer Park. And congratulations to Talon on getting that done. So it uh, looks great. Um, the other thing that um, some of the committee members from the Schottmeyer Parks Committee have mentioned to me is that they are definitely looking to transition away from being responsible for the park. Mm -hmm. And um, really, the one thing I think that's still outstanding is just getting a management plan. And if we don't get one from them, then I think we'll need to, to make sure and produce one because if the town's going to be responsible for doing most of the day-to-day -day maintenance, which is what we agreed to, I think, then we just want to hand them a document as to, you know, mowing twice a year, the dock is going to be maintained by them. Um, if there are kayak racks that were put out there, you know, who's responsible for them? anything else that we want to include as far as what has to happen on maintenance on the property. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the property looks great. I've been out there. You know, it's a nice path mode on it. Um, the waterfront, the docks, everything looks good. Um, the bridges that we built last spring are still in good shape, so those are holding up fine. And my suggestion might be that for next year server liberty project we could continue to build those bridges all the way through the woods so what we did was we built them if you come to Shopmeyer park you're in the, the um, at the garden you're looking towards the waterfront you follow the path you'll see to the left there's a, a right angle mode and that will take you across to the little wooded area and we just built a footbridge that would take people over the wet areas mm -hmm. But as you go through the woods, it still gets wet in there. So if we just kept building those little footbridges out, that would give people access all the way to the uh, waterfront that's on the other side of where the dock is. So does everyone know how oh. the dock creates a bridge? So when the dock's pulled out, if people want to go you up there, there, it'll be easier for them to get up there. Because for most of the year, it's not real wet. It's just a little bit muddy, I would say. So, um, Let's see. I just had a, a couple folks from the public reach out to me about Chanda Park. Um, there is a sign down there that I just want to remind people generally that says there's no dogs allowed in the park. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, and it does say at several places, it's pretty clearly signed there that you're not supposed to bring dogs there. I can understand if someone lives on the neighborhood on the other side of Shanda Park and they're trying to walk through the park to get to the other side, 
and they walk through the sidewalk and they just quickly walk through I'm not as concerned about that I don't think that's really trying to violate the law that's just trying to get from one part to another but I think what the sign is really intending is they don't want people to bring their dogs down to the grassy areas and use that as a as a dog area so um, the other thing is uh, there was a question about um, feeding the ducks and we're really not supposed to feed the ducks down there um, it's not just about feeding ducks bread or you know other things that could be healthier for ducks it's just we're not supposed to feed them period as a general rule and the duck population is actually quite a bit down I don't know if anyone's noticed the eagle actually the bald eagle actually flies up to downtown and hangs out there and I've noticed there's a lot less ducks in that area Word since, is that, out. <laughs> since that bald eagle took up residence there uh, I rarely see more than one duck if I see any down there so I think um, the kites have been known too. yeah I think the eagles and the other birds may have realized ducks were sitting ducks so to speak um, okay um, continuing on with Shanda Park we um, had our meeting on the living floor line. Um, people in attendance were um, myself, um, uh, the town manager, um, the chair of council, Tony Weinstein, um, Steve Miller from uh, Great Bay, um, Aaron How is it Aaron How is it Aaron Howard? No, um, Crystal. Kirsten. Kirsten, sorry. Yeah, Kirsten. And um, so we all met. We, we took a look. They, they, they gave us their thoughts that they would definitely consider this as an area that possibly could be considered for living shoreline in certain parts of it. Obviously, mm -hmm. some areas where the wall in particular is falling in actually would not be the areas that would probably be the best for the living shoreline. Um, so um, Tony Weinstein just said, you know, I think at this point what we really need is a, is a committee. So her request was that we consider making a formal, you know, I would send an email to the, to the town council saying we would like a, um, a subcommittee that would look at basically a waterfront master plan, which would include Chanda Park. There would be a member from Conservation Commission, there would be a member from the town council, um, and then there would be members of the general public, you know, people that have just shown interest or, um, so that was that was what sort of came out of that meeting and that would, that's what I want to put to, to you guys as a question. Does that sound like a good idea? I think it does. I've been trying to advocate for that for a while. I think it's um, a project well beyond our scope. It would take a lot of funding to fix that wall, and it's a big investment. So I think, and there's other questions, you know, about the waterfront that needs to be addressed too. You know, the town's looking at a grant to look at a bridge across there. So there's also the question about. Um, pushing the fence back from the water treatment plan so that people could walk uh -huh. to that other part of the town property. So that was brought up, and there seems to be some um, consideration that that would not be a difficult thing to do and that the town could do that. So all of that sort of would be encompassed in this um, committee's work. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anyone have an interest in serving on that committee? Okay. Nice. What what I think I should, what I'll do is I'll put it to Tony, send her the request that because it's going to be under their jurisdiction to create this committee, and that um, they'll definitely solicit to let people know if they're interested. They can contact the, um, Tony or the, the council. Um, all right. So that's on that um, I did we did get a sort of I did talk to um, 
Underwood Engineering just preliminary, and they are still thinking it could be up to five hundred thousand dollars to fix that wall. Mm. Now that's just a preliminary, preliminary, preliminary. You know, it's not like actual, you know, estimate. But they just said that figure is is reasonable to consider is how much it could cost. So it's it's a, it's a steep price to, to fix that wall. Um, there was a public meet or public celebration um, with uh, Chris Pappas um, on the, the um, Lubberman's Creek culvert project. Did mm -hmm. you guys hear about that? Where he came, um, where they I think it was the official kickoff for the project or something. So that was some that was great that he was able to be there for that. Um, Um, on Neil Mill Road, a um, couple updates out there. Um, the Old Lee Road Bridge, does everyone know where the Old Lee Road Bridge is? So if you are at Neil Mill Road, you hit the gate, right? You go past the gate, your first left is Old Lee Road, okay? okay. And you walk down there and you come to a bridge over the... Cassic River. That bridge is um, supposed to get a new deck. Um, the work is going to be completed by Newfields Conservation Commission, volunteers, Snowmobile Association trail members, etc. What I don't know is if they're going to do anything to um, jack it up a little bit because it's kind of, if you've been down there, it's kind of it's kind of dropped mm -hmm. to a little bit just over the years so um but they're they're scheduled to be working on it this month it might even be done this month yeah i i can speak to that a little bit i helped out last saturday on that okay so the the old decking was removed the wood that the old decking was nailed to was removed because that was rotted mm -hmm. um the the physical structure below that is two big i-beams that span the river mm -hmm. and then there's four cross braces that connect those i-beams um, two new sets of stringers that are pressure treated four by sixes were put down and then the decking is four by sixes that are uh, screwed into the four by sixes that go along the, the span um, related to trying to level it out um, there's not an easy way to move the steel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what was done was the, the wood that the decking is nailed to that was on the lower portion. There's basically one corner that is dropped, so the whole thing's kind of a little sloped. That end, the wood was um, jacked up and propped. Okay. And then it was supported at the other places along the span where there's cross braces. And so it's still slightly lopsided. It still leans downstream, if you will, mm -hmm. um, but substantially less than it did. Great, great. And at least less. So I think the decking is all up. Uh, there's still some work to be done on the entrance on each side, and the handrails, um, the posts were up, but the wood that is going to actually be a rail was not up yet. Okay. But That's it looks great. great. That's great. Um, also, it's not officially on New Market property, but many people from New Market take advantage of this. If you go to Neil Mill Road and you walk on the other side of the gate, walking through the woods there are the path, the road bed, right? You will eventually come, you'll go past the big field on your left. You'll come to a turn to your right. Selt has built a massive new bridge across a series of beaver ponds that were there so basically they've um by doing a bridge across that which is it's a beautiful bridge by the way it's like a boardwalk kind of mm -hmm. bridge so you can you can stand up on it and you can look across the ponds and it's great for wildlife viewing or or oh, just coming nice. down there and what it does is it creates another loop that you can do now because it, cre it connects to another part of the trail that the only way you could get to before was to go 
all the way around, like either start at Bald Hill and go that way or go all the way through the woods and come back around. So basically it's just another loop that people can do now. And it's, it's just a beautiful bridge. They did a really nice job. So I encourage everyone to go down there. It's, it's, it's quite um, a thing to see. Um, the only other thing is I did go down there a couple times in the past month onto Neil Mill Road and the gate was not locked and people had started driving down there and I just told, reminded people and we shut the gate back up, you're, you, you can't drive on that road. Even if the gate is not locked, you're not supposed to drive on it. It's only emergency vehicles and it does say that clearly on a sign. Um, I think it was a parking issue that people were looking for a place to park. Um, oh, for like and the gate had been left open, and I think it was left open because Selt used it to bring the wood down there for that project, mm -hmm. and maybe someone forgot to close the gate. Um, but we may have to look at locking the gate again if people continue to drive down there because that's uh, we don't want that. Um, so, um, okay. Um, the other thing that happened last month um, was we were able to hold um, our sort of seminar slash meeting on um, with the Conservation Law Foundation, um, Linda Polly, and I um, can't remember her intern's last name now, but um, she came uh, here to Newmarket and we were down in the basement. We did a about an hour and a half seminar on nutrient loading in the bay and really what it was about was what happens when you use fertilizers and uh, pesticides and how to reduce the use of those things in your own personal gardens, lawns, um, and some of the project work that they've been doing um, on Sagamore Creek. So they've been focused on a project on Sagamore Creek because it's been really impaired by a lot of nutrient loading into it. And um, as Melinda pointed out, um, all of the communities now in the Great Bay um, have, are either almost done or have done their water treatment plants. So everybody has really made an incredible contribution on that side. Um, and that's 33% of what comes into the Great Bay comes from water treatment plants. So that number mm. will be reduced, but the 66% of nitrogen loading that comes into the Great Bay actually comes from septic systems and people's lawns and stormwater runoff. And so it's, it's non-point contributions, right? It's not like a single entity dumping, it's just all the runoff. So that's why they were bringing this up. Um, uh, she took out uh, myself and Casey and um, Tony Weinstein um, on uh, the um, their boat and showed us some of the areas that have been compared to you mm -hmm. know areas of eel grass depletion and things like that, which is what the main result of all the nitrogen loading, which then has a cascade effect on the whole ecosystem, right? Because eel grass is sort of sets up everything you know that's where the little fish are that's helped set up the oysters and all of that so um the good news that came out of that was that at the mouth of the lamprey where they've been rebuilding the oyster beds not for commercial use just to rebuild them that project's going well and it seems to be that the quality of water there is is better so for mm. new market side we're we're doing things to help. You know, we've supported that um, rebuilding of that um, oyster, those oyster beds. We've redone our water treatment plant. So um, those are good things. So overall, there's a tiny bit of progress there that's been made. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit gro yeah. of increase in eel grass cover over the last couple of years, but um, still lots to be done. Um, and that's uh, that's online, so I encourage people to watch that on. on uh, Chris was there and um, videotaped it, so 
if you didn't get a chance to see it yet, I encourage everyone to go on and check it out. Um, and that's that's all I have under chairman stuff. Let's go on to the photo contest. We are closing in on, um, we're about a month away from uh, the event uh, at Stone Church. Um, we have very few photos, so we encourage uh, folks to, you know, submit images um, if they've got them, um, enjoy the properties, get out there, um, you know, and take your photos. <laughs> um, email those into us so that we can um, get them ready and get them displayed. But we're we're looking forward to um, to getting some folks, um, you know, out there in the public with their images and stuff. So, um, I'll get the information to Casey for the Instagram and to you for Facebook with the final details from the Hoffmans about um, what that's going to look like, and then we can everybody can share it with your own networks, however you want to do that. And we'll see if we can't get it in the town newsletter. When we know the final details about the event, we can get it in the newsletter from through Steve. I, I had one item that was new business. I just want to make a quick announcement about um, Lamprey River Watershed Association annual dinner, October 16th at the Lee Grange Hall. There will be music. And I'm excited about that. And the speaker is Sherry Godlewski from DES talking about what data over time is showing about climate change. It's not a political speech. It's just here are the implications of what rising water could look like in the area and what some different people are doing about that. She's a very lively, great speaker. And I first heard her last year, in fact, at the um, New Hampshire Conservation Commission statewide conference. So. That was the connection. I thought she was such a good speaker. She'd be good for the annual dinner. It's a dinner. Suggested donation is $10, but pay what you will for that. And we have an intern now at the, at the association, Bonnie Turek, and she's going to be doing some work with a drone and getting some current pictures of different places along the Lamprey. And she's meeting, in fact, tomorrow with Peter Sautel from Seven Rivers about where he thinks some good spots would be for some updated drone pictures that we'll have access to. Thank you. That was a backup to the new business, but thank you. So I actually already talked about the Shannon Park Subcommittee and the Schottmeyer Park Management Plan. Um, I did also want to add um, statewide meeting we know is coming up, and people want to go. I am all in favor of any you know supporting any of you going because um, I don't. I don't think we should limit the number of people mm -hmm. that go because I think um, you can learn so much there and it's worth going. It, it'll pay off. It'll pay back what you learn there towards the town and your service towards the town. I believe many times what we mm -hmm. invest in sending people there. So. Is that the one we went to last year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at that folder yep. in my office yesterday. It's yeah, coming up. Yep. I, I, November 2nd? November 2nd. So um, if you're interested in mm -hmm. attending... Um, Pembroke Academy. Let it, yeah, it's, it's the same place it was last year, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Pembroke Academy is over, would you say Concord? Is that concord ish Auburn-ish. Auburn yeah, yeah. Easy, pretty drive-ish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, not too, it's not too far. So if you're interested in going... Near uh, Tucker Road. Let us know. Um, uh, if we have a number of people are going, we should try and carpool. Do that to save gas and stuff. So we would just send you an email, and you'll ba you'll have them batch register us through yeah, Town Hall. That's what I would do. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. Let me. We should just look. What did we do last year? We just individually registered and then submitted it. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we want if we want to go, it would be easier if I then just contacted Carol and said, got one check for, for yeah. everybody and submitted it all at once. Probably that's the best. Yeah. So is there a preliminary idea of it who wants to go? I do. Okay, great. 
this one, so it's not going to be great. Do you? Drew's already been many times. I actually <laughs> haven't. Oh, you haven't? <coughs> okay. All right. Um, I'd like to go, too, so that's four of us. So we can't sit together at lunch. <laughs> can or can't? Can't. Cannot. I don't can't. think so. No, that makes a meeting. That's that right. Yeah. Meeting. So no, no, no meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Go learn from the other town. Sit with other people, right? Yep. All right. So with that, I will make a motion to go into non-public session to discuss confidential matters related to real estate pursuant to RSA 91-A dash or colon three dash comma Roman numeral two C. Do I have a second? A second. <laughs> I didn't know you finished. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Let's wait till they cut that off.